So you're basically teaching uh, an AI, an a set of algorithms, how to communicate in English, how to understand English, how to understand the data in English. You see, like, have you seen from any of your clients directly an increase in the amount of inspections or, or percentage of homeowners that are willing to allow them to inspect because of the less invasive procedure of using Groovehawk versus, hey, let me go grab my ladder and hop along. Technology is going to evolve, AI is no different. So welcome back to Life Center for the Business Control Podcast here at the Storm Restoration Contractor Summit. We got some shit today. So this episode is probably brought to you by Send Digital Agency and the guys over at Roofer, as well as the gals. They're not left out. All inclusive here. We're going to talk AI with Roofhawk.ai. So, Brian, I'll leave the intro to you. Uh, my name is Ryan Fontaine. I'm an AI developer here in Dallas. Uh, run a company called Citadel Analytics. That's our AI company, and we're the people behind Roofhawk AI. Uh, you probably have seen us online. Uh, basically, put up a drone over a roof, we'll tell you everything that's wrong with it. Speeds up the approvals, speeds up the inspection processes, homeowners love it, and uh, basically keeps you safe on the ground, too. So there's a lot of advantages uh, to, to using AI in roofing. Mm. A lot of talk about AI these days. There is a lot yeah. of talk. Specifically around like Chat GPT, G. Oh, you down with OPP? What is that? Is that what the kids are saying? What? What Chat? is Chat GPT? Basically, teaching a computer English or teaching a computer a, a different language, Japanese, French, something like that. But mm -hmm. it's teaching it the structure of the language so it can interact with us. Like we will not understand binary ones and zeros, like how computers talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So you're basically teaching uh, an AI and a set of algorithms how to communicate in English, how to understand English, how to understand the data in English. Uh, and that's what ChatGPT is. That's why you can ask a question, say, you know, what do you, uh, write me a paper on uh, particle physics. It understands the words write and paper and particle physics, and it will go out and it will cure, it basically query its own data as to particle physics. I know I need to write a paper, so that means I need to do this. And so it's understanding the language like we do. Okay, okay. So I've heard people and they're like, they think that everyone is going to now lose their jobs and be rendered irrelevant because of chat GPT and some of the capabilities. I mean, when you stack it up against some of the, the older AI content creation type models, I mean, it's not even close in no, my it's experience. Not. It's, it is absolutely head and shoulders above what we had before. Uh, and it will get better. The thing about AI and, and just even computers in general, I mean, I know that, you know, when we were younger, we didn't have iPhones. Like, technology is going to evolve. AI is no different. It's not human-level intelligence yet. You can still trick it. You can do all of that. But it's a tool. And, and really, if you use AI or really just computers in general, technology in general, as a tool to augment you, you'll have great success. But the fear of being replaced we're not there yet. We will be there at some point. Um, I probably would not want to be a contract attorney. Uh, if I was a kid in high school, I probably would choose a different career path <laughs> than that uh, because contracts are, are fairly standard. And so if you have data that's standard, AI will dominate that. If it's something that requires a significant, uh, basically generalized thought pattern, humans are still significantly better. That's why we are still our better drivers, we're better pilots, we're all, because it's a, little, it's a very complex environment. But something simple like, you know, writing a business contract to buy into a company or to sell an asset or something like that, those have been standard for probably 50, 60 years. Mm. What are some of the limitations right now as far as like how it's gathering its data? Well, the biggest limitation is the lag between the gathering of the data, putting into the data, data set and training. That's why ChatGPT, I'm pretty sure it's June of 2021, is the last data that's in their data set. And they were training ChatGPT all the way pretty much till its release. Mm -hmm. So you have that lag, and a good one, and I know it's become famous now, but all of us AI developers, we were the first ones to mention it. If you type in, you know, what, what do you think of the, uh, the war in Ukraine, it will think to World War II not to the current war, because the current war started after all the data that was put in the model. So that is one limitation, is you will not have real-time data in a chat GPT model currently. When they do do that, that's when you get more of, like I say, a, a very intelligent Google search result. 
where instead of just saying, here's the websites, it'll give you the exact answer to your question in a, in a pretty professional form. Do you see a future in the field of like prompting? Because I've gone on, I'm not great at prompting the AI, and the AI I feel like is as good as you are as far as querying and prompting it, right? right. Um, because sometimes I get like shit output from it, but I don't <laughs> think it's them, it's me, right? It, it can be, but actually, believe it or not, that kind of scenario is beneficial to the AI because that AI will understand by you saying, oh, this isn't what I meant, the AI is actually learning. And so when the AI, which at least ChatGPT, it's called deep reinforcement learning, not to go too far down the nerd rabbit hole, but it, it, ner it, it learns like we do. It learns from positive and negative reinforcement. Yes, that is what I meant. No, that's not what I meant. But both get fed back and it learns that way. So kind of like when you're when you're a young kid and you know your parent is saying no, don't do that, you learn not to do that even though they're not saying yes, they're saying no. We learn by both positive and negative and so does AI when using certain families of, of algorithms. So when I was a kid, I was always grounded for shit that I wasn't supposed to do. How do I ground my chat GPT? Can I punish it for a week? I, I think you could probably throw it off its game if you really wanted to mess with it, but I think, uh, I think it's more likely to ground you and just be like, I'm not answering any more of your questions. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Mike. We're shutting you down. <laughs> so, God, there's just so many questions. Have you guys used ChatGPT to your benefit at all within your company? We have. Uh, a, lot of it, a lot of the limitations of ChatGPT, though, are it's, it's a generalized model. Right. The, the, the GPT part actually is an AI term, generalized pre-trained transformer. So it's very broad. Like they, uh, they probably, I don't know exactly what data they changed it on or trained it on, but I would say it's probably the English Wikipedia plus the classic literature, probably the Library of Congress. Um, so a lot of very broad scope data. So it's good for writing or at least getting an idea for a marketing piece, but you wouldn't use it for, say, uh, writing a medical paper because medical terminology involves Latin, not just not English, and it's very specific language that is probably not in ChatGPT at a high enough volume. Because uh, it probably is in there, but you need repetitive data to get it to learn. They probably didn't train it on, say, a medical corpus. That makes sense, too, and as well, like, sample size of things, right? right. In stats, you need a robust enough sample size for that right. data to be relevant, right? That makes Same a lot, principle. That makes a lot of sense. So let's talk, let's talk about Generally speaking, AI, where do you see the evolution of AI and what, how big of an impact is it going to make in the roofing industry or adjacent industries in the next five years? Well, let's break AI into two different types. In, in AI, there's one, basically, artificial narrow intelligence, which is what AI is really good at. One specific task that the algorithms have been trained on. Okay. The other one is AGI, which is artificial general intelligence, which that's Terminator. That's, that's where you have one algorithm, it can go say that's a threat over there, it can also control the walking of the robot, it can do uplinks of satellites, all of that is AGI. We are fortunately a long way from AGI, mainly because of processing power, but ANI, which is what Roofhawk falls under, and most AI, even ChatGPT is a, a, under that umbrella, that is really where AI can shine when you use it right. So like using, using Roofhawk as an example, we trained on hail on a roof on certain materials. Okay. If you were to throw out a whole new roof material that we have never seen before, Roofhawk wouldn't work because it's trained on a very narrow scope of operation. So that is where AI will shine and it continues to shine. It gets better every day. So you said that, so you've got all your data that Roofhawk was trained on and if you had a new material for roofing, you wouldn't necessarily know, the AI would be confused. Right. right? It wouldn't be as accurate. Okay. So how long do you have to invest into like the artificial intelligence for Roofhawk.ai to become familiar enough with a new material to where you can be confident in its ability to perform its job? That's where being an AI developer helps mm -hmm. uh, because I know a lot of the, the sh shortcuts and protocols you can use to speed it up. So you're talking two weeks to a month. Because um, we, mm. Roofhawk is, like I said, it's a kind of an offshoot of Citadel where we have just servers all over the place in, in all sorts of different tier one data centers. So we got a lot of horsepower behind us. So we can speed up the training process uh, quite, a, quite a bit. Where did the idea come to fruition? 
The idea for Roofhawk was actually brought by, uh, by our business partner, Craig. Uh, he was wondering if we could do it because he knew I did AI. He's like, hey, if we put a drone up, and he knows I'd, I've done AI on drones on other projects, you know, if we put a drone up over a roof, could you identify stuff that's wrong with it? I said, well, probably. I mean, we do it for precision agriculture. I can tell you which corn is not doing well and which ones are just by looking at them on, through a drone. Yeah. Um, so we did the same thing, reached out to a couple of roofers that he knew, and they're like, we love that idea. Are you serious? We love that. So we ended up building it out. Um, COVID hit literally right at the beginning part of uh, Roofhawk, so it was kind of a blessing that everything got shut down so we could, we could kind of uh, program it in secret. And... Uh, it has been huge. It is, it's great for safety and the homeowners love it because you don't have to get up there. So it's a huge benefit for them. So walk me through the process. I get out of my truck with my drone. It's equipped, that drone has software in it that's equipped with roofhawk.ai? Actually, you can use any drone with roofhawk. We kept the software off the drone because the drones, the drones aren't powerful enough to really process the AI. You'll drain the battery real fast. Like AI is very competent, uh, computationally intense, so it means more power. Right. And if you put a bigger battery in a drone, now you've got bigger weight, now you've got problems with flight dynamics, there's all sorts of things. So typically speaking, you want to take anything that's like that off the drone. So you can use any drone, just 12 megapixel and higher. Uh, we've even had some, uh, some clients who, who I think they ran out of battery that day and just used their iPhone. As long as, long as you've got a selfie stick and you're between 10 to 12 feet off the slope, you're fine. It will, will basically do any kind of wind, any kind of hail, um, and it's, it's pretty much every roofing material minus TPO at this point. Uh, TPOs, you just can't really do it visually. Um, and so that's, that's been a big benefit for the roofers, but it also helps with a lot with the homeowners. They, especially here in Dallas where we are with, with SRC, Everyone knows roofers. Everyone knows the game sure. here. They're a very educated homeowner group. Being able to come up and go, look, I, I know that you've already had your door knocked 30 times today by, by roofers after the hailstorm. Look, I really don't want to get up on your roof. I know you don't want me up there anyways. Do you mind if I fly this drone? It'll take some pictures. Our AI will tell us everything that's done with it. Nobody says no to that. You're no longer just another roofing company. Now you're a trusted source. Oh, they're using drones and AI. They have to be legit. So there's your branding, build it with a homeowner right there. And you go through and then you can show the homeowner visually, look, this isn't even necessarily me saying this is hail. I do agree that it is, but this is also AI saying it's hail. You, your roof is destroyed. Another benefit is you can now do before and after photos too. That's a big thing here in Texas too is, because we get so much hail, oh, this was pre-existing damage from the hailstorm two years ago. Well, with a drone, you can just get up there, or fly up there, you don't have to get up there anymore, and just every year or every six months take photos of the house and you have a full file documenting when that hail was. So if the adjuster comes out and goes, we're not gonna buy the roof because this is from two years ago. <laughs> oh no, actually it's not because here's the pictures from six months ago, one year ago, there's no damage until this hail storm. Huge edge. Uh, and all and Roofhawk tracks all of that for you automatically. So that's awesome. Advantage. Yeah, I, I didn't even think of that. Do you see, like, have you seen from any of your clients directly an increase in the amount of inspections or, or percentage of homeowners that are willing to allow them inspect because of the less invasive procedure of using roof hog versus, hey, let me go grab my ladder and hop up on the roof? Oh, it, it's a huge spike. They really? all spike it. We've, we've had guys, uh, one of our first beta testers, so even before we, we launched, he went from because he was a smaller one here in Fort Worth, a two-man operation. I think he said about 400,000 in sales to about 1.3 million just using roof, because he was getting in neighborhoods that people didn't want him on the roof. Right. Well, he doesn't have to now. So now you got neighbors telling other neighbors like, hey, this guy's out with a drone, and he ended up cleaning up entire neighborhoods, million dollar home plus, which pre, pre-inflation was, was more impressive than it is now. <laughs> you know, everything's a million dollars sure. now. But, um, you know, they, they do a lot of that. It's a wonderful sales tool. I, I will say adjusters, they seem to like it overall, but let's face it, if they set out to not buy the roof, I mean, God himself could come down and say that's hail and it wouldn't make much of a difference. So right. it's just another bullet in your chamber, but it'll get you in with the homeowner. That is absolutely proven across the whole country. Dude, that sounds absolutely amazing. And 
incredible, quite honestly, the, the technology behind it. If you had to say the, the one thing that you're most excited about as far as the evolution of RoofHawk.ai in the coming years, what would it be? I think it would go from being an AI developer focused to, it, to what the roofers tell us they need. Like we built this and, and none of us were really, I, I've never been a roofer. Frankly, I don't want to get up on a roof. It's more terrifying to get off. I'm I fucking learned, terrified I, of both. Oh, yeah. I, getting, off the la getting off the roof onto the ladder was a terrifying experience. Crab walking I don't, down the yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be doing that again. That was, that was a one and done. I'm good. I did my time. The, but, you know, this was developed with AI in mind. And there's been a lot of good feedback from clients about, hey, what other features could we have? So I'm really excited to get those out to market because we want to listen to you guys and give you what you need. I can build a lot of cool AI tools, but if they're not a value to the industry, then I'm just wasting time. So mm. I love hearing the feedback, both good and bad, and saying, man, I really wish it could do this. I really wish it would be more accurate on this, or could you do this? That's what I'm excited about. I love, I love making it better. Yeah, that's amazing. So make sure that you guys are liking, sharing, commenting, um, and doing all the things that are important to give the folks over at RoofHawk.ai the information that they need to better serve you, right? Exactly. Dude, I'm super appreciative that you came by. Thank you for It's really good on stuff. Here. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if somebody wanted to get started with RoofHawk.ai yesterday, how would they do it? They just go right on RoofHawk.ai and fill out the form, and our sales team will reach out to you. And then use coupon code at the set. I'm just talking to you. There's no, <laughs> there's no affiliate links here, but thanks again, brother. Appreciate everyone in the audience. We'll see you. Absolutely. Thank you.